I'm going to show you exactly how to set up your own multiplayer Minecraft server on Mac or Linux. The first thing you need to do is go to the Minecraft.net website. Go to the downloads page located at Minecraft.net slash downloads and scroll down to the bottom where you'll see multiplayer servers. It says here that the Windows version is much easier to install and that the Mac and Linux version can be a little bit more complicated. But that's not really true because the most complicated part of setting up any server at your own home will probably be configuring your network. In fact, starting the server on Mac is going to be pretty simple. So what you need to do is just download this jar file here, the Minecraft server jar. I'm going to choose to keep this. And now your server is pretty much ready to run. Before you run your server, just make sure your Java is up to date by going to the little Apple if you're running a Mac and running your software update. That should take care of any necessary Java updates. If you've been running your software update frequently, you'll probably already be up to date. On Linux, depending on your version, run the appropriate system, uh, soft system update right now and update your Java. So I downloaded the Minecraft server jar to my downloads folder. I'm going to go to my downloads folder now and take a look at it. So here it is, and I have some previous versions that I've downloaded as well. The advice it gives is to always rename your Minecraft server jar to the standard name, which is just Minecraft underscore server dot jar. So here's the one I just downloaded. It's the third one I've downloaded, so I'm going to have to rename it. But when you start it, it's going to put all kinds of extra files and directories in the directory where you're running it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a brand new folder here. I'm just going to call it Minecraft. And you're going to want to put this folder wherever you want to run your Minecraft server. It doesn't really matter for practical purposes. You could put it in applications or documents. I'm just going to leave it here in downloads. And I'm just going to copy this Minecraft server jar that I just downloaded into this folder. And then open the folder. I'm going to now rename this Minecraft server jar to just Minecraft underscore server jar. That'll make sure it'll run properly. So there are two ways to start your server now. You could go to your terminal and run it there from the command line, or you could create a script and execute that. I find it simpler just to execute it from the terminal rather than setting up a script, so that's what I'm going to do. Mac users, your terminal program is located under applications slash utilities. So open that now. When you open your terminal, it will be open in your home directory. Now my Minecraft server jar file is in downloads slash Minecraft, so I'm just going to go there now by typing cd, which stands for change directory, space downloads, because my downloads folder is in my home folder where I am right now, slash Minecraft. I can verify this is the correct folder by typing ls, and that'll list all the files in this folder. So there's my Minecraft server jar. Now recall the instructions from the minecraft.net slash download page. All you need to do at this point is just execute this command right here. So I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to type Java, which is telling my computer to run the Java program, and then I'm going to send some arguments to Java telling it what I want it to run. So dash capital X MS, this is specifying the minimum amount of memory. I'm going to use one gigabyte and if you want to use megabytes, you can do it like this, 1000 megabytes, so that's the same thing. And then I'm going to specify the maximum amount of memory by typing dash capital X, MX, and then I'll specify the same. And then type dash jar, and then the name of the jar file that is going to be passed on to Java. So it's the Minecraft server jar. And then you can type no GUI. In indicating that it doesn't have to try to start an interface. Now the server starting up, it's got some warnings here. That's just because this is the first time I've created the server, so it has some files and folders that it has to make. So now that it's done all that, I can go ahead and connect to the server and see if it's running. So go to Minecraft and go to your multiplayer tab. I'm just going to click add server and type 127.0.0.1 as the server address. This is the address of your loopback adapter, meaning this is the address of your computer. I'm just going to click done. So there, it's found the server and it's running. I'm going to click through and I've logged in. And everything seems to be working fine. So there, you've tested your server. I'm going to disconnect. Of course, 
this is pretty lame because you can't give out this address. This only works if it's the same computer that you're running the server on. So I'm just going to delete this and I'm going to find the real IP address that I can use to give to my friends to let them connect to my server. I just wanted to do this to make sure I knew it was running. So if I go back and look at the terminal window, I can see that I connected here and everything worked fine. In order for your friends to connect to your server, you'll need to give them your public IP address. To find your public IP address, just go to your favorite search engine and type get my IP. It should show up right here at the top, or if it doesn't, click through to one of the top search results and there will be a tool there that will help you find it. You also need to know the IP address of your computer on your local network. So to do that on your Mac, go to the Apple, then go to About This Mac, then go to More Info, then Get the System Report. From the System Report, click on the Network. So right here where it says IPv4 Address, and it says 10.0.1.15, this is the IP address of my computer. Depending on what type of router you're running, you'll also need the IP address of the router to log into it in order to make changes. So right here the line that says router is the IP of my router. My router has its own utility program, so that's what I'm going to use to make changes to it. Most routers will have an interface that you can load through your web browser, and that's how you make changes. So the changes we need to make to our router involve taking all requests for our Minecraft server and forwarding them to our computer. The requests for the Minecraft server will be identified by the port that the request is made on. If we don't do this, the router will just block the incoming request and our friends will never be able to connect to our Minecraft server. So now I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my router and make the connection between incoming requests for the Minecraft server and my computer where the server is being hosted. So my router is administered using this utility. Most standard routers will be administered through a web-based interface. You'll take the router IP that you got from the system report and enter that into your web browser. Then log into your router and administer it like this. So you'll be looking for a tab somewhere, in this case mine says network, Yours could say something like applications or ports and forwarding or advanced. And you'll be looking for a place where you can do this port mapping. Or it could also be called port forwarding. Or sometimes just applications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new rule for port mapping. I'm just going to call it Minecraft server. And I want to take the incoming port 25565, the default Minecraft port, and forward it to the address of my computer that I got from the system report. So UDP and TCP are just different protocols that information uses to travel along the internet. UDP is more commonly used by games, and TCP is more commonly used by things like web browsing and FTP applications. I'm not exactly sure which one Minecraft uses, so to be sure I'm just going to open both for now. I'm going to enter the name of the IP address that I want to forward this port to as mine, so it's 10.0.1.5 and I got that from the system report. And I want to forward it to the same port. So th this is just saying that any connection from the internet using either one of these two protocols to this port will be forwarded to the same port on my computer that I specified here with my IP. So I'll save that and just click update. And in just a few moments, my router will be able to accept connections to my public IP address and then forward them along to my Minecraft server. There, it's set. So I'm just going to copy my public IP address here. So I just have to go back to my terminal and restart the server that I stopped. This time, I'm going to start it using a slightly different method. The way I started it last time, if I came back here later and closed this terminal window down by accident or on purpose, 
the server would stop running and anyone who's connected to it would be disconnected. So now I'm going to start the server in such a way that if I close this terminal window, it will continue to run. This is the same way you would start a server if you were using a cloud hosting service. So that if you close the terminal window, your server would continue to run. So I'm going to type screen dash capital S and the name of the screen I want to create, which is Minecraft. This is kind of like creating a background program or a program running in a different tab. And then after this, it's just the same command that I issued before. There, the Minecraft server is starting in a screen. And it's finished starting. So I'm going to go to my Minecraft, add a server, and type in the name that I wrote down. Once I have the name, I can click Done. And it's found my server, and I'm going to just go ahead and connect to it. So there, you recognize this terrain, it's the same server, and I'm running through my public IP address. And I can give that address to any one of my friends and they can go ahead and connect to my server right now. Now for some of you out there, you might have a router that doesn't allow the loopback. Meaning you won't be able to connect to your own server using your public IP address, but other people will be. This is a common problem that can have people stumped for a long time. So if you have this problem where you can't connect to your server from your own router, use that address I showed you earlier, 127.0.0.1, and maybe that should work. Or you can edit your hosts file. If you don't know what that is, I'll have some notes for that. Now I'll show you how to configure your firewall if you're running it. Newer versions of macOS may have this disabled by default. But if you want to enable it, or if you have enabled it, I'll show you how to make an exception for Minecraft server, so you'll be able to run your firewall, but still allow connections through to the server. So start by going to System Preferences. Click on Security and Privacy. Under the Firewall tab, I'll have to click Unlock here to make changes. So now I've unlocked this so I can make changes, I'm going to click the advanced button here. Normally you would make a change by clicking the little plus icon and then selecting the application that you want to allow through the firewall. Unlike on other firewalls, the exception isn't done by port number but by application. The application that you want to allow the exception for is Java because that's what the Minecraft server is running on but it's pretty difficult, if not impossible, to actually allow an exception for Java by finding the program. It's kind of buried inside of a system folder. So the simplest thing to do is actually to shut down your Minecraft server and close your Minecraft game, then stop your firewall. Then go ahead and restart your Minecraft server, and when you start your firewall, it'll prompt you for an exception to the running Minecraft server. Just go ahead and allow the exception and it'll automatically create an exception for you. Now I'm back at the terminal and I'm just going to go over the most basic commands you'll need to operate Minecraft in a screen. So my Minecraft right now is running in a screen so if I close the terminal I won't lose the server. What I want to do to exit this screen is press control, hold it, and press A. Then at this point press D. There, it's released the screen and I've returned to the normal terminal window. To reattach the screen, type screen dash R and then Minecraft. If you want to kill the screen, you can type control and while holding control press A and then press K to kill the screen. But try not to close the screen this way because it doesn't shut down the server properly. Instead, to shut down your server, just type stop. If you check back in your Minecraft folder, you'll see all these new files that it created. These are the files and world folder that you'll use to administer your server. But that's another video. Anyways, thanks for watching.